What we need to look at now is uh, an initial look at how the derivatives connected the graph of the derivatives connected to the function itself. This I find is one of the more difficult things to for people to do. So it's not like we're looking at it here and never looking at it again, but it's an initial look and we're going to we're going to work on that over the course of this whole unit. You probably tried to draw something here for this. Uh, before I try to draw it on here, I'm going to show you uh, well, it's not the same function, but it's a similar function. The derivative is the slope of that tangent line, right? So if if I if you think about if I was graphing the derivative right now the slope's a pretty big number here it would actually be off this grid right okay it'd be up, it'd be up there somewhere as I move across here um, we're gonna see at some point here five now the slope's four it's there's there's the slope of the graph right the the values of the slope are all positive over here so they're all above the axis but what happens at this point right here? The slope becomes zero, so this, this graph of the derivative is zero. The y value here is the slope of this, right? The slope of the original function. This is the original function, and this black line is the derivative, going to become the graph of the derivative. Now the slope becomes negative. So it jumped a few points there, but you get the idea. Fill it in. <laughs> um, now it becomes negative, right? Because the slope is negative. What's going to happen here? This is going to continue to get more and more negative until you get to maybe right here somewhere. Okay, what's going to happen after that? It's going to go back up because now it's starting to, it's kind of, it's changed direction there. It's still negative, absolutely. It's still negative, and it's going to be still negative until you get to right here. Okay, and then it starts sloping up again. So you got to think about those three different parts. Is that a parabola? It is a parabola, yeah. You're going to find that the derivative of a cubic function is a parabola. The derivative of something that has degree 3 is going to be something that's degree 2, and the derivative of something that's degree 7 is going to be something that's degree 6. And you'll become very familiar with that over the course of this. This is where the slope is the most negative, right there, right? If I drag this back over here, this is where the slope is going downhill the most. That's why it's the low point of the derivative. Everywhere it's zero, this crosses the axis here. The y values here, right? The, the values in the y axis are the slopes of that red line. It's hard to make that connection because when you're doing y values, when you're looking at the slope. If you try to graph this, then I would start with a few points. You're not going to be able to drag across like that and do every single point. But if you try to uh, put a few points on there, I would look first at where it's zero. Okay, it's zero at these two spots here. So then if you want, you put a point there and a point there. You might look for where you think it's the most negative. And just again, think about how, think about the picture sort of that we just looked at on that graph. That's where it's the most negative there. You might, if you want, you might estimate the, the slope. But for now, who knows what it is, negative four or something like that. Negative three, maybe. So somewhere down there. Now you would have no way of knowing before probably that whether it's a sharp curve or not. To think about whether it's a sharp curve, think about does it kind of suddenly change as it passes through the middle? Is it a sudden change? It was pretty smooth change, right? It, it as you go through the middle here, it it's slowly changing and then it starts to change that way. It isn't as though there's a sudden change from one to the other. It's a smooth change and this is why this is a this is a curve here. If you can uh, if you can imagine that. But at, at this point all I was hoping for was something like this. Okay. And probably something better if you were doing it more carefully than I was. Uh, no, I put this in just to tie it into a context. If the first graph showed the depth of water in inches in some uh, drainage ditch at the side of a road or something like that, think about what the second graph would represent and think about what the situation would be. So let's uh, let's start again so that we don't have to. No, I guess we can. Here we go. Oops, I should have put this over here first. Okay. 
What if this black line represented the level of water in a ditch, although I need to put it up here so that it's positive, right? How about that? What would it represent? What's happening with the level of water there? It's going up and going down, right? Oops. Why are you not letting me move here? So at the beginning of whatever you're starting your time, it, the water level's about two or something like that. The water level's going up. What is that? What does the red line represent? What does the derivative represent in that? The, the rate of change of the water, right? The water level's rising, so the rate of change is positive. All right. The slope of this graph is positive at the beginning because the because the line's going up, right? The slope itself is decreasing, but that doesn't mean the water level is decreasing. It just means it's not going up as fast anymore, right? Um, so we have the, the rates going down. The rate is going down. That's what that is, right? It means that the water level is rising slower and slower, right? Until this point right here where water level is not rising anymore. Now the rate itself is negative, right? The rate being negative means it's going to be uh, the water level is going to start going down. The rate of change is negative. Okay, the derivative is negative. Let's see the bottom part of the thing here if we can. Oh, come on. Why is this not working? No, it's just. Oh boy. I have to disable that stupid thing, I think. Um, so we have positive rate of change up here, zero rate of change, because at that instant, the water level's not changing. After that, the water level's going down, the rate of change is negative. The rate of change goes down to sort of some minimum here, just off the screen. And then the rate of change starts coming up again. It's still negative, meaning the water's still going down, but the rate of change is actually increasing. To here, the, at that point, the water level's not changing for that instant. And then the rate of change becomes positive again, and the water level starts going up. The original graphs, how much water you have, the derivatives, how fast the water's changing, the rate of change of the water. In any situation, that's true, right? You have an original function, and you have the derivative. The derivative's how fast the original function is changing at any given point. All right, let's go back to the picture. The second thing I asked you to do was do the reverse of this. 